God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. All right. So you can all hear okay? Sounds all right. All right. We're, thank you for being here this morning. We are here to lift up the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's thank him and praise him for this opportunity. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the air that we breathe and for the opportunity to gather together to lift up your name. So I pray, Lord, that we wouldn't just kind of walk through the day, check off the Sunday morning box. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our minds and hearts by your Holy Spirit that has drawn us here. As we sing praise, as we hear about who you are in this sermon this morning, as we reflect about your goodness and your compassion and your mercy and your holiness, Lord. I pray that we be drawn closer to you and more in love with you and more into your image. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the ability to be online and we pray that that technology would work. If there are those that need it, Lord, that are watching online, we thank you that they can do that this morning. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship is Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6, and verse 14. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make Him known. They speak without sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message is known throughout the earth, and their words to all the world. God has made a home in heavens for the sun, and burst forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run a race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord as we get ready to sing the words. Good morning, good morning, good morning. man. Hello there, good to see you. Good morning. Greetings. Greetings. Where's the rest of you? Good morning.
We have a unison prayer of confession today. Sometimes we have a prayer, sometimes we have a statement. A statement of a confession, this is what we believe. This is a prayer of confession. And then I will invite you to have a time of individual prayer of confession. But it should be on the screen. Is it on the screen, Mark? Let's uh, pray together. Gracious and holy Lord God, we are creatures that routinely fall short of the perfection of our Creator demands. Thank you for saying Jesus to pay the price at the cross that removes the barrier between us and you. As we look to Him, may we be united to Him by your Holy Spirit and help us to walk by the Spirit in units of life. Please forgive us our trespasses and help us to forgive those who trespass against us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a moment for silent prayer of confession. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear those words and live those words today. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let all those free in Christ shout, Hosanna. Hosanna. this this afternoon. I, I saw Owen and Isaac yesterday. Where did I see you? At the fairgrounds where there was a whole bunch of what? Trackers. Tractors. You guys like tractors? Yeah. You can go see these tractors. And this one was powered by coal. You guys ever seen coal? Yeah. He put it in. He had a little circle furnace in there, and it was burning. It was very hot, and that coal would burn, and it would power the tractor, and he drove it all around the fairgrounds. You guys saw that, right? The big black steam engine. How do the other tractors run? What, what makes other tractors run? Engine? And then what do you put in there to make it run? Gasoline. Yes, okay. They have to be powered by something, don't they? Has to be some kind of power. Gas, engine, steam. Who's our power in life? God. 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 And specifically, we just sang the song, didn't we? Three in one. Who's the three? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus told us that when we believe in Him, when we trust in Him, that the Holy Spirit will be in us. And it's like that gas, or it's like that coal. It, he, he will power us. He will help us to live for God and give Him glory. So, who powers you? God. God. Who made you? God. And what else did He make? Everything. 
and why did he make you and everything else? For the glory. All right. You guys remember that? Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that these young ones would be powered by the Holy Spirit, that they would understand what you did on the cross. I thank you for the, for the teachers that do such a good job of teaching them that, that sin is anything that they say or think or do that breaks your word and your command, and that you, God, can give us a new heart. And I, Lord, I, I know that they know that and they understand that. Internalize that, Lord, and let the Holy Spirit live in their lives and empower them to live for you now and forever. Thank you for each one of these awesome kids. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you guys. I think there's a little bit of snacks over here. All right, so now when they're bugging you to go to the fairgrounds, it's free. You can walk in. We'll take donations, but it's free. So check out the track. This morning, we're going to look at Psalm 145, and I am using the NIV, so you can follow along in your pew Bibles. I actually, actually did a sermon earlier this year on the first part of this psalm, verses 1 through 9. So today I'm going to read 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip down to 8 and go to 8 through 21. And the sermon will be a little bit different than what you're used to, but that's all right, I think, I hope. And uh, I will explain that here in a minute. But before we read parts of Psalm 145, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Lord, we just sang part of this scripture. How great is the Lord our God. We talked about telling the next generation, passing it on from generation to generation. And then we sang that you get all the glory and all, you get all the, the praise, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Lord, that same Holy Spirit that will live in us as we trust in you, the same Holy Spirit that inspired David to write down this psalm, that same Holy Spirit, I pray, would speak to our hearts now from your word. Lord, speak to me and through me your word to your people so that they are encouraged, so that they are, are their focus and their attention is on you and what you have done and how great you are and our lives then praise you for every minute of it. Lord, I do pray, like we said this morning, the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are my rock, you are my redeemer. Please speak to your people from your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Psalm 145, I'm going to start with 1 and 2, and then jump down to 8. Hear the words of the Lord. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Verse 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon is going to be a little bit different. I was taught in seminary by Dr. Pruto to have one main point and take the congregation through the text to that one main point, and you are used to that. And his goal in teaching us that was he wanted us to be able to have the congregation know Scripture and know how the Scriptures interrelate. 
And a lot of churches do more topical type things. You might go to a church and hear about, you know, 10 ways to be a Christ-centered family. Or five ways to improve your witness in the neighborhood. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I was taught is that the best thing is for congregations to go through books of the Bible, go through Scripture, so you have a consistent diet of learning the Word of God. And you know that's what we normally do. Well, today, just to something different. I want us just to reflect a little bit, using the Scriptures I read, on who the Lord is. I want us to do that because you and I know that we live in weird times. Those of you that have kids in the South Side District, like I did this week, received an email. And the email said, you have heard that out there that there are threats. And the email was reassuring us that those are taken seriously and proactively being talked about against. But you heard that not only here in our school district, Butler didn't have school half the week because of threats. Weirton didn't have school half the week because of school threats. I heard on KDKA that an elementary student confessed to calling in one of the threats. An elementary student. So that's the world in which we live, and that's what we hear about. And then we hear about drug use, and we hear about suicide, and we hear about addictions running wild in our culture. And then we have the two people that are supposed to be the leaders of our country talking back and forth. And they both say things that aren't true, but not only do they say things that aren't true, the supposed moderators say things that are not true. And we know that there's AI out there doing all kinds of things. So you, you can't believe what you see or even sometimes what you hear. And that's just part of the world we live in. Sicknesses, cancer, we hear so many things. It's a crazy world in which we live. And even as a believer in Jesus Christ, if we take our focus off the Lord for a second and look around, we might go, whoa, what is going on? That is why I want to remind you this morning, from God's Word, who the Lord is. Because when we remember who He is, then we will praise Him. Because He is taking us through this sinful, fallen world. Not on our own strength, but because of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to start with a few words about the psalm. And then look at particular passages that remind us who the Lord is. First, a little bit about the psalm. All 150 psalms are psalms of praise. This is the only one that's titled that way. Now, if you have some English versions of the Bible, Psalm 100 will also say a psalm of praise. But most English versions call that a psalm of thanksgiving. The only one then that specifically is titled a psalm of praise is 145. You don't have to know Hebrew, but if you did, you would notice that it is what's called an acrostic. And what that means is each line starts with the consecutive letter of the alphabet. So if it was in English, it would be A, then B, then C, then D. It's a memorization technique so that you can remember this, uh, this scripture and know it by heart. It starts with two verses of specific praise and ends with one verse of praise. And if you were a faithful Hebrew, you would say verses 1 and 2 twice every morning and once before you go to bed. Think about what a great way to start and end the day it would be to say this. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Now, let's look at six things that we can be reminded of who our God is through his word. Verse 8 first. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. This is directly who God revealed himself to be to Moses in Exodus 34, 6. 
If you read Exodus 34, 6, it says, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, David reminds us of this in this psalm. The Lord is gracious. Now, that's the NIV. If you look at the ESV, it would say, The Lord is compassionate. The Hebrew word is only used to describe God. It's used in Joel chapter 2 to describe God's attitude toward people who repent. It's used in Nehemiah 9.17 to describe his mercy toward rebellious people. God shows us compassion or graciousness. Now, he is also holy. In fact, if you keep reading Exodus 34, after it says that, he goes on to say, he will not leave the guilty unpunished. But the fact that he is holy and will not leave the guilty unpunished, and he is compassionate, sets us up for the ultimate display of his compassion. And the ultimate display of his compassion is when he took on flesh and blood and lived among us and died on the cross. The one who was sinless died on the cross for those of us who were sinful so that we, the guilty, may receive God's compassion. The Lord is compassionate. But that's not even at the end of the verse. Slow to anger, rich in love. Love is the Hebrew word you've heard me talk about so many times. Hased. The covenant keeping, never ending, giving you what you do not deserve, love of God. In this crazy, fallen world in which we live, don't look to the things around us. Look to the Lord. He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is good. The same thing that he said in Genesis 1 at each day of creation. It was good. Good meaning well, in order, healthy. This verse is describing what the theologians refer to as common grace. Here's how Ligonier Ministries defines common grace. The grace of God restraining sin, evil, and misery, and wrath in this fallen world, while conferring general blessings on all humans. It restrains evil and confers goodness on mankind as a whole, reflecting God's attributes of goodness, mercy, and justice. In other words, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 45, the Father causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. He sends rain on those who do right and those who don't do who don't do right. Now, common grace is different from saving grace. Saving grace is when our dead, sinful hearts are regenerated and brought to life, and we understand what Christ has done, and we repent and we believe. That is saving grace. But common grace is what he gives to every single person every single day, whether they acknowledge it or not. And can you imagine if he did? He has compassion on all he has made. That word compassion, if you use the ESV, would be mercy. He has mercy on all he has made. It's the Hebrew word for a woman's womb. Think about this. In the Hebrew mind, the most intimate, vulnerable, protected place is the womb of a woman. And that same word is used for tender care. Psalm 139 says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are knit together in our mother's womb. So just as God cares for a baby in the womb, that's what his mercy is like to us and through common grace to everyone, even if they don't recognize it. That's who our Lord is. Verse 14, the Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. 
The Lord upholds. I looked up this Hebrew word and it means steadies, supports, braces. Think about the importance of a support beam. People went crazy this summer because a viral picture went out at Kennywood that the racer was being held up by cinder blocks. And this, they looked at it and they said, it's not a load-bearing beam, it actually is perfectly safe. But even though people thought it wasn't safe, they did something to change it. We don't have to think that God is keeping us safe. We know He is. The Lord upholds us. He supports us. He lifts up those who fall and who are bowed down. James 4.10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord and He will lift you up. Recognize your need for Him, not just in the bad times, but even in the good times. I've been fascinated with this guy, Jelly Roll. Now some of you are thinking that's a food or something. No, I'm talking about this performer. He's a very interesting character. And one of his most famous songs says, I only talk to God when I need a favor. And as he goes through the chorus, he's a smart guy. He realizes, and he actually changes it, he says, if I only talk to God when I need a favor, then who am I to expect anything from God? But then he concludes, of course, with saying, but God, I need a favor. <laughs> we all need a favor every morning. We need God to open our eyes for another day. We need him to pump the blood through our body. We need him to provide oxygen. We need to be supported and upheld by God. And that's exactly what this verse says he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. What else? Verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. He's righteous. He's in accordance with his own standards of truth, of love, of justice, of holiness. We can't say that about the presidential candidates. Can't say that about athletes or performers. The Lord is in accord with his own standards, and he is faithful. You don't need to know the Hebrew language, but it's interesting to me. And in the Hebrew language, what is a verb can become a noun, and then it can become an adverb or an adjective. And in this case, the word that we have there is the adjective form of hesed. He is faithful. He's not going to change. He's going to be truthful. He's not going to lie. He can be trusted. He will never leave us. So just so far, let's review. The Lord is compassionate, full of covenant-keeping love, ultimately displayed in the cross. He's good to all. He's our support. He's our undergirding. And we humbly submit to him day by day. He's our only standard of right, and he's faithful to that standard, and he's faithful to us. But wait, there's even more. Verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The Lord is near with us. Jesus said in John 14, When I ascend and I go to be with the Father, I will send a helper to be in you, the Holy Spirit. Remember as he ascended in Matthew 28, he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Call out to him. Now call out to him in truth, according to his standards. In other words, don't say, Lord, please help me to steal this car. No. Say, Lord, please help me in this situation, because you're righteous and I'm not. And quite frankly, I'm scared and I don't know what to do. And he is right there, never to leave us or forsake us. The politicians, they'll leave us as soon as the election's over. The advertisers, they're done with us as soon as we buy the product. The performers leave town, the players get traded. The Lord is near to those who call on him in truth. And one last one for today, verse 20. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. 
watches over, if you were with us at the park last week when I did Psalm 121, that is the same Hebrew word that in Psalm 21 is keep. And we, we said you can think about it like this. Keep, guard, protect, preserve. He preserves those who love him. Well, who are the people that love him? Those who fear him and do what he commands. Well, what does he command? He commands us to trust Jesus. Jesus said that in John 6, 29. This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Jesus' way of saying, believe in me. That's the thing that you need to do. So brothers and sisters, in Christ, united to Jesus Christ in faith, the Holy Spirit is living in you, and he will guard you. He will preserve your soul now and through eternity. Well, so what, Pastor Jefferson? One more verse I want to share. And this one is, is actually not in your NIV. We've talked in Sunday school, we've talked in Bible study, how um, the scripture are translated from one language to another. Original Hebrew into Latin, or Greek into Latin, or then into English. And, and we've talked about how sometimes there's manuscripts that are slightly different. And the question was asked, well, how can it be trusted then? Well, it can be trusted because the major core doctrines are never affected. But there is a slight difference here. There is an extra verse in some manuscripts. It's not in your NIV. If you had an ESV, it is there, and it's in brackets. It's in brackets because it says this verse isn't in all of the manuscripts, just in some of them. But that verse, which is at the end of verse 13, what I would call 13b, I think is a good summary of everything I want you to remember this morning. It says this, The Lord is faithful in all his words, and kind in all his works. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. We live in a culture that is scary. And in that scary culture, in what I would say is, is almost completely a secular culture. And what I mean by that is you could go throughout your day and never hear a reference to God. We are reminded in that culture, this is who the Lord is. He is here. This is His word. His words are faithful. His acts are kind. Remember these things. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion in all He has made. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will be destroyed. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. May you and I receive that grace and love, the love that was shown when Jesus died for us. May we receive it, be connected to him. Fear him, trust in what he did, and therefore claim those promises. And in response, praise him. Verse 21. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. In verses 1 and 2. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. I heard Pastor Alistair Begg say something this week that was really depressing. He was giving his sermon, and he said, by the time you leave here and go to lunch, you'll only remember 30% of this sermon. Well, it's less than a third. And he says, by the time you reassemble here next Sunday, you'll remember about 5% of the sermon. If he's right, which he probably is, pretty depressing for people like me. They're only going to remember 5% of this by next Sunday. If they're only going to remember 5%, remember this 5%. The Lord is faithful in all his works and kind in all his works. Praise him in his words. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. 
We need that. We need one to undergird us and uphold us in this world. We need one to give us compassion. We need one to save us. We need one to look to, to know that we are being preserved and protected. And Lord, I pray that everyone here this morning, everyone watching online would know that through a relationship. It's not through religious acts, because we could never do enough religious acts. It's through receiving what you have done on the cross. Receiving that sacrifice and being united then by the power of your Holy Spirit to you yourself, Lord God. So Lord, if there's anyone here that that, that makes sense today for the first time, that means your Spirit has brought their heart to understanding, brought it to life. And Lord, I pray that they would simply say, I turn, I repent and believe that you died on the cross for me and you saved me, Lord. And I know there are many that have understood that for years and decades, Lord, uh, but this is a scary, complex, fallen world in which we live. And I pray that you would use this word to refocus us on who you are and what you have done and who you will continue to be because you will never change. And I thank you for that, Lord. We love you. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus, holy name we pray. Amen. We respond to God's word in a number of different ways. And um, one of them, we, we've started this in the last few months on the third Sunday, is to just remind you and share with you about what's going on in mission and how you can be involved in giving, how you can be involved in going, how you can be involved in, in praying. So Greg, I'm going to invite you to, to come up and Greg's going to share some uh, mission information and opportunities with you. Thank you. All right, I wanted to talk to you about um, two mission opportunities. Uh, I'm going to start off with one that's been presented to us recently. Uh, it's called Hosanna Industries, and they are they are a local organization that has a far-reaching uh, far-reaching work across the country. Uh, it's been brought to us through Josh Butler's uh, acquaintances, and I'll read you rather than me try to explain it all. I'll just go ahead and read you a little paragraph about what they're doing. We believe that God is leading and directing us to once again prepare to pack our bags and go by faith to a place we have never been before to deliver the kind of help we can offer to the people who need it most. On Saturday, October 26th at 8 a.m., we will gather at the Hosanna Rochester campus to circle in prayer and to send off mission workers and volunteers that we believe God will call for this purpose. This group of commissioned workers will travel 15 hours and arrive in Spencer, Iowa on October 27th. Over the course of the next five days, the mission will work in at least three locations with the objective of conducting the many aspects of rebuilding needed to be done in order to get people back in their homes before the winter winds arrive. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work will be accomplished during this intensive miracle week of recovery. And if the Lord's calling you to be a part of this, please let us know without delay as the laborers are always needed in the Lord's work. Um, please keep praying for us in our efforts. We believe our work is as important as conveying the love of God through Jesus Christ. The people who have who earlier this year were absolutely fine, but who now have witnessed what happens when a town suddenly becomes a lake. For them, and for all of us, whether we know it or not, life is fragile and always changing. But God's love is steadfast and it is sure. And no matter what, we can always rely upon that. So the town flooded, it's in Iowa, Spencer, Iowa, and it, and it wiped out the entire town. A lot of, uh, a lot of houses are gone. Uh, Hosanna Industries has come through, and, and as I understand it, they've, they've done all the heavy work, and what's left is, is hanging drywall and, and finishing it and preparing 
for them to get moved back in before winter time. They're looking for volunteers. Uh, the dates we would leave uh, anybody that wanted to go we would get we would leave on the 26th of October and you'd be five days. It's five days of work. Uh, as far as I am aware, there's no expense to the church or the people. You, you show up, you dump the cars with them, and, and you head out. They provide the tools, they do everything that you need. So this is an absolute great opportunity for anybody that's interested in furthering God's kingdom through work and witnessing to people. So if anybody is interested in this, uh, please contact me or Josh Butler and we can get you headed in the right direction. I think it's an awesome opportunity. The second thing is um, every year we do it twice. The ladle is, is coming back up in October. It's October the 14th is our opportunity to serve at the ladle. And if you've never done it, it's an awesome way to, way to serve. Um, go to the church down there in Ambridge and we take our food with us enough to serve 100 people. And we help to serve, we fellowship with the people, and, and we clean up and we're out of there. It's just, you know, you know, three, four hours, you're done. And you, it, it's really cool to see the people, how much they appreciate what you're doing for them, and um, and get to fellowship and talk with them. So our menu for the ladle is meatloaf, mashed potatoes, green beans, salad, and rolls. There's a sign-up sheet out on the bulletin board by the kitchen. We, we cook all the food, we take all the food, and, um, and we serve the food. So as many volunteers as we can get. The last time we did this in April, we had plenty of volunteers, and it, it is so nice to have a lot of people to take care of the work. So if anybody's interested in cooking or serving, there's a sign-up sheet out there, put your name on it, and and I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. It's, um, it's another way to further God's kingdom and to fellowship with believers and to witness to people who aren't necessarily believers. So uh, please contact me for any questions. Beth Fabian can answer any questions or uh, sign up on the board. Thank you. Thank you. I worked with uh, Hosanna Industries when I was in college on a spring break trip in Bruin, Pennsylvania. And uh, the foundation of the house had been laid, I think the walls and maybe even the roof. And a group of Westminster College and Grove City College students spent our spring break of finishing that house and moving the woman in. And it snowed during spring break the day that we moved her into her house in Bruin. But I learned from Josh that the same folks are still running it. And it's, uh, if you have the time and maybe God's saying, hey, go, go do that, I would encourage you to, to really think and pray about that. And then the awesome thing about the ladle is that there's enough of you all that show up um, that I get to play dinner music um, on the piano. And they tell us that we're the only group that does that. I just go through the hymn book and play hymns and choruses. And the people give me requests sometimes, but they really appreciate that. And, and if you've never been there and you're not sure who exactly eats at this thing, um, all different kinds of people. There's, I know there's a, a retired pastor and his wife that go there every Monday to have fellowship with others. There's others that that's the meal that they'll have for the week. They may not have another good meal until the following week. And there's others in all different um, places in life. So it's a, it's a really neat ministry. I'm thankful that we did it long before I was here, and we'll do it long after I'm gone, the Lord willing. So keep continuing um, to comment and put your name on that board. We, uh, we respond to God's word by going to him in prayer. And uh, we had several requests in Sunday school. Continue to pray for uh, Laura Miller and, and baby Arthur for his development. We've also been praying for Laura's dad, Continue to do that. Um, to pray for uh, Cheryl Ho, lost her house uh, this past week to a, a fire. Pray for her and give her a call if you, you know her and want to encourage her. Um, Dorothy asked us to pray for some of her family members going through some, some issues and physical issues. Uh, we talked about traveling issues. And then I mentioned um, my friend Rob, Pastor Rob, 
Spar from uh, Greystone Presbyterian in Indiana. You've been praying for him on his cancer journey. He's back in the hospital. And has a kink that needs to be taken out. It's causing him a lot of pain. And he appreciates every one of your prayers. So continue to pray for him. And I know there are other things. So I will leave a time. If you have a request you want to bring out loud, lift it directly to the Lord. Let's go to him in prayer. Lord God, how awesome that some people in Beaver County and maybe Allegheny County can see a need in Iowa and in the name of Jesus say, we want to go help with that. I'll give up, I'll give up my time that week and, and do that. So Lord, I pray that you would provide everybody that they need for that. And maybe it's someone or more than one person here from this congregation. Lord, speak to the hearts of people. And thank you, Lord, for those that say, hey, there's people that need food, and there's people that need fellowship, so let's do something about that. And every Monday, the faithful Ladle staff assemble. We thank you for Ada and Kent and all those that, that are the full-time staff, Lord, that do this on a regular basis. And that we have the opportunity uh, twice a year. And Lord, I pray that more churches would join in. And I thank you for the opportunity we have to not only feed physically, but to speak words of encouragement and gospel scriptures while we're there and pray with people and talk to them, Lord, Lord and play hymns. Lord God, thank you for these opportunities. Thank you for the Recycling Grace Ministry, for our missionaries in the Philippines. Lord, we, we lift them up and we thank you for these people and these places. Closer to home, Lord, we do lift up students and, and pray, Lord, that they would have no fear of going to school. I thank you for those that are in administrative positions and, and teachers and those that are, are working hard to make sure that every student is protected. And we thank you for that. Thank you for our preschool, Lord, and, and the little guys and girls that were in here this week. And, and Lord, just the patience and joy. Thank you to those that were helping uh, with the three-year-olds, Lord, and just what a blessing that is. Lord, I pray for those that have had tragedies this week. Pray that they would be pointed to you in your glory. And Lord, we pray for those that are sick, sore throats, and lots of viruses going around, and this cancer that we hear so much about, and it causes so much stress and pain and hurt, Lord. We lift up our friends and family dealing with them. And now, Lord, I will pause as some of your people may have something on their heart they want to praise you for or lift up before your throne of grace right now. Just ask for prayers for in the Czech Republic. Hansa, who stayed with us and his family is struggling through the flood right now. We would just mess and say, Look, we praise you. Just prayers for the woman, Marava River in the Czech Republic. Lord, I pray for Will injured in the football game Friday and ask that you remind him of your presence and your goodness in this disappointing time in high school life. And we pray for others that, that were hurt in the game. And Lord, um, we just thank you for your protection and your mercy and your grace. We pray for those that are traveling. Lord, those that are grieving. We, we think of uh, the Figleys and Dave. Um, saying goodbye to his aunt this week. Lord, we lift them up and we thank you for them. Thank you for their celebration of anniversary today. 
And Lord, there are others that are, are grieving. We lift them up to you and we ask for your mercy and your grace. Lord, thank you that you are all those things we just talked about, that you are good, you are compassionate, you are gracious, you are merciful, you are holy. Thank you and remind us to look to that daily and praise you. Now would you hear us as we come together praying the prayer you taught us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We respond to God's word by giving of our time, our abilities, and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given in faith. every day and I pray that we would embrace it and serve you with a huge smile on our face. Thank you. Thank you for these gifts that have been given. Pray that you provide for every need of your people and pray that the message of Jesus may go out throughout western Pennsylvania and throughout your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. They have a smile too. I just want that to be It was awesome. Um, we will continue Bible study this week. We had an interesting time talking about communion last Tuesday. That will continue this week. Maybe watching a couple of uh, videos, let you listen to R.C. Sproul explain some stuff that, um, in a better way than I would be able to. Um, but I look forward to that Tuesday at 5. Um, Sunday school, we're, we're back in full Sunday school. We never were not in Sunday school, but... But we're back in full Sunday school, so there's classes for all ages. If you've never been here, please come. 9.30, um, Sunday mornings, adults, kids, doesn't matter. The 29th, a couple weeks away at 3 p.m. is when we're going to the Lakeview Nursing Home. Um, I would encourage you to come if you've never been part of that. It's a neat time to uh, just be together with the residents there and worship God with them, sing songs, talk to them, encourage them. Looks like the deacons are meeting following worship today. Um, you heard about the ladle. This is a ways off, but get it on your calendar now if you would. Uh, our Lord willing, November 2nd. That's a little bit later than we've done in the past. But our annual Hayride and Bonfire. It's a Saturday night, November 2nd. And then last that I have is um, we are again helping with Kids Bible Club. I'm hoping that those that have helped with the food in the past are willing to continue that again. It's going to start on October 9th and go through November 20th. If you have questions about helping with the food, you can talk to me. If you would like to help in another way, many of you have helped. That helps. Um, others have helped throughout. And if you'd like to do that, they would love to have you. Um, talk this year to Pastor Abby at Mill Creek. And I put her uh, email on there. 
to see, or you can call the church and leave a message. But they would love to have us, again, as helping in any way possible uh, for that great ministry and kid fund. Any other announcements? Charlie? Uh, Tuesday we attended the ladies' luncheon. There was a few ladies from Hanover Church there. I sat with some ladies I didn't know, so I got to know some new people. The fall ladies' luncheon will be October 8th. And it is their annual fundraising fair. They will have tables set up, I guess, with a bait sale, book sale, uh, some vendors there and, and things like that. They will still have the lunch. And also they'll have a speaker, which is Irene McFadden, and she is speaking on recipes to die for. So I'm not sure what it's going to be all about. Hopefully we'll maybe get some recipes out of it. But it was a very nice time. Um, it is over they try to be over promptly at 1 30 so you're not there for the whole day you have your afternoon but the food is delicious and it's a good felt time to fellowship too hopefully we can see some more of the Hanover ladies there I have the card up on the bulletin board with the name and the phone number that you would contact to make your reservations you have to have your reservations in by October 3rd so that they will include you in the ladies luncheon you do not have to pay ahead of time you pay whenever you go in so there's there's no getting your credit card out there or anything like that you do pay whenever you go in so i'd like to see us get a few more ladies involved also great thank you okay we uh we got a good demand to leave the uh writing over so if anybody has a spare knows where we can get one uh, let us know we're looking for and he really needs one now because the one that Greg loaned me won't turn now. So <laughs> when those leaves start coming down, he needs one. So yeah, talk again if you can help us out on that. Thank you. Sam. Our closing hymn is uh, I don't know how familiar it is to you, but the tune will be familiar. It's on the screen, but if you'd like to look at it, it's page eighty-two in the hymnal. It's called "Praise the Lord, Ye Heavens Adore Him." Let's stand and sing.
and he is with us always. Now receive the benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.